Okay, to finish up this week, a look ahead to next weekend's Premier League visit of Newcastle United. Um, there's multiple different directions that we could take this conversation, but I'll tell you what, lads, let's keep it to the football. Um, Steve, look, I mean, they've obviously had a great start to the season, thrashing uh, Villa 4-0 yesterday. Um, let's be honest, it's going to be a tough game. Yeah, I mean, they uh, they murdered Villa, didn't they? Um, <laughs> Stop it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was... I mean, that was... Yeah, we've... Been, I mean, let, let's be brutally honest. Villa are a bad team at the moment, um, and Newcastle are not. Um, they're, I mean, they've got the best defence in the league, I think. Um, okay. yep. Nick Pope has got what, six clean sheets already, so he's justifying the the money that that they paid paid out for him. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, Newcastle, while they've spent a lot of money, they've they've actually spent it really well and really sensibly. Um, there's not been any. I mean, Chris Wood is the only one really that's been that's been massively overpaid, mm. but that was, I mean, they, they reaped the benefits of that just by taking, taking the centre forward off, off a direct rival last season. So, I mean, they'll, they'll be quite happy with, with the, the business they've done. And, and yeah, Eddie Howe's getting them, trying to get, get them into a, into a functioning team. And I mean, he's even managed to get, get a tune out of Miguel Almiron, which, um, I mean, I do wonder how, how much influence Jack Grealish's uh, fairly mm-hmm. stupid words in, um, uh, sort of on social media have, have kind of led to Almiron sort of deciding right okay now I'm now I'm actually going to try try and be a proper footballer um but yeah they're 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 a good they're a good side they've got they've got a very very well drilled defense um I mean let's be honest it's an Eddie Howe team so they are going they are going to be time wasting to hell yeah. they're they're going to know all of the dark arts and I'm sure that come Sunday we are going to be ab- utterly infuriated by it um but we've got to find we've got to find a way way through um i mean we've got basically we've just got we've got to be better um we were fine first half west against west ham um a little bit un, unfortunate that fabianski had a had a good game in in that one um arsenal again could have could have even got could have got more out of that game if um sort of if things have fallen for us and and as I said yesterday second half we I mean we could have had three or four um second half fairly comfortably so it so it's not as if we're not creating chances um we've just got to find a way of actually putting them in the back of the net rather than straight at the keeper Mm. um so yeah I mean that's 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 presumably going to be the bulk of the work this week um find a way to stop Almiron um weaving weaving his magic um be interesting to see if callum wilson's fit um Mm. because that always seems to be a bit of a coin toss but given that we've got a world cup coming up and he's made it very clear that he uh he fully expects to to be in that team despite having not been picked for a squad for what two years now um which i think quite a bold claim um yeah be be interesting to see whether whether they're at they're at full strength for that but yeah i mean that Let's, let's be honest. They're they're in the top four for a good for a, for a very good reason at the moment. So it's it's not going to be an easy game. But um, we have seemed to kind of turn up at home against the better sides this year. So maybe um, maybe them being um, sort of more on the front foot than they than they perhaps used to be in the past. Maybe that might play into our hands a little bit. Um, but we'll see. Indeed. Well, he's scoring goals. That's uh, one of the few things that he's doing as an Englishman at the moment. Um, Glenn, look, just to, to sort of mention Eddie Howe, I mean, obviously there was pressure on him when he went up there last uh, well, winter time almost. You know, I think yeah. it's pretty much a year now to, to the day since he went in there. He's obviously got a new contract since then, but, you know, he kept them up. And to be fair, you're looking at that team now, a lot of the players that are in the team were there prior to sort of the takeover. Yeah. You know, I know there's a few in there, but, you, you know, give him credit. He's, he's done a good job. You have to look at players who were there before and how much better they're playing now. Yeah. Like Joe Linton, Almiron, um, Longstaff. That you know, the, these are players that have been there for a long time. Um and it goes to show that you improve when you've got better players alongside you. Um, you know, the quality they've brought in with Bruno Jimerez, whatever his name is, in midfield. Um that's that's brought the best out of the likes of Willock and Longstaff and 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 he's Eddie Howe's been very astute with the defensive signings he's made. Um, you know, Tripp is an excellent signing. Um, wouldn't have been everyone's cup of tea because I think he was about 30, 31 or whatever mm. he was, but he he wanted him there as a sort of leader of the defence and he's he's done that. 
Um, the centre halves, Shaw and Botman, they're a good, they're a good pairing. In the previous captain, Lascelles, he don't get a game now. Yeah. So, uh, um, I think is Matty Target injured? He's just not been playing. I don't think. Has yeah, he? yeah. I know they've got the the lamp post playing left back, haven't they? <laughs> at the moment, Dan, Dan, Dan Burn. Yeah, Dan Burn. So it's you know it's a it's a good it's a good team that he's built there. Um, oh, and our mate Saint Maximum can't get a game either. So that <laughs> that shows how well Dan Sheldon's been playing. Mate. So. I, <laughs> I would love to be able to criticise Eddie Howe because I never liked him um, <laughs> when he was when he was at Bournemouth. It was just moaning. Him and John Williams were brilliant on the radio, weren't they? It was just like, my God, <laughs> what is going on there? But um, he's he's done a very good job at Newcastle so far. And yes, he you know he he can he has the money to um, to bring in the players that he wants to bring in, but that don't always work for everyone, does it? I mean, mm. look at Everton over yeah. the. <laughs> yeah. over the years so no can't knock it and it'll be another it'll be another really really <laughs> difficult game but as steve says we do, do tend to turn up against the better size <coughs> oh, excuse, oh, excuse me and uh yeah i fancy us to do it again on uh on saturday fingers crossed um jacob look from a, a saint's point of view then the the chaps have mentioned some of the the key threats um i've just drafted callum wilson into my fantasy team so there's every <laughs> chance a that he'll either be unfit or won't score so that's a positive but uh from a saint's point of view i mean how do they sort of manage that balance between trying to cope with clear newcastle attacking threat and trying to keep on the front foot themselves because they're going to need to yeah we spoke about the lack of patterns of play and one of the reasons is, is the lack of any sort of constant formation or just familiarity, really. Um, so, you know, I expect Armel Bella Kotcha to be back and starting next week. So I think that gives you the license then to perhaps go into a back four. Uh, for some reason, Maitland Niles has not played right back. I think perhaps he could play there, but then uh, that will depend on whether Romeo Lavia is fit enough to start. So there are more options than I've been in recent weeks, which I think is a good thing. Um, Slanton at home, it's their last game before the World Cup at home. Yeah. You know, Ralph Harson has always got to get something out of this game um, for, his, for his sake. So we just got to go. I keep saying it. He's just got to go to how he played, how everyone loved him. You know, the reason why people loved him, the reason why he got so much success with such a, you know, pretty poor squad in quality he's mm. got to go back to his principles you know because if he is gonna if he's gonna leave then he's gonna have regrets but not doing that because he's lost his identity so i think he needs to go on the front for whoever he, that he played at home uh he needs to go for it and hopefully with armel bellicott jap and lavia hopefully being fit then that will give him a uh, license to yeah and steve just briefly i suppose that is the one positive now he's got a few options starting to come back you know if bella Kotchap is fit lavia you know obviously he's only played 45 minutes it's going to take him time to get up to premier league level again you know you can't just chuck him yeah. in necessarily for 90 minutes but maitland niles is a back you know available there's there's some options there that he can now think this week about trying to put his best team out there yeah i mean it might be that lavia is only good for an hour or 70 minutes or or whatever on saturday on sunday sorry but i think ultimately um, if he's fit enough to play, then he plays. Mm. Um, and I would imagine that the same will apply to Bella Kotchap. I think Ralph seems to not quite trust um, um, Chaletta Saar alongside Salasu as a two. Mm. Um, so especially when we don't have a, a recognised right back at the moment. Um, so yeah, perhaps maitland Nile slots in there, which is not ideal really. Um, I mean, he's he's shown that he's very capable in the centre of the park, and ideally that will be where he'd play. But perhaps that's perhaps he then slots in um, once Lavia gets removed, sort of twenty minutes or so from the end of the game. Perhaps mm. if if that's the way we go. Um, but yeah, ha having having a few options, and I mean also having um, a couple of players who have scored a few goals. Um, albeit against Middlesbrough under 12s or, or, or whoever, whoever it was they were up against um, we'll this, after, um, this afternoon. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you can only beat what's in front of you. So um, mm. they got they got the goals and hopefully that'll have that'll have done Mara and Walcott's confidence um, the world of good. I mean, Walcott's actually been fine, hasn't he? The, mm. the two the two sub appearances he's made, he's he's come on, and he's he's looked composed. He's not looked he's not looked off the pace actually, really, which is something that. For the bulk of last season, he was miles off, mm. um, which is why we weren't, which is why he wasn't playing. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've we've got options, and yet at the same time, there's quite a few of those players that you just think, well, he's going to play him, he's going to play him, um, and I guess we'll we'll wait and see how how it all sort of how it goes in the mixing pot and comes out the other side. But mm. I think, yeah, I. <laughs> 
I don't I don't really know what system he'll go for. Where I'd, I'd be I think now if if as Jacob says, Bella Kopchak's fit, um, I'd be surprised if we don't go back to a back four. Mm. Um, even though we're playing against um, one of the better sides, um, just because I think I think I think we would rather have the ball than not. Mm. And and being able to put an extra guy in midfield enables us to exert a little little bit more control over things, yeah. um, and certainly not get overrun through the middle like like we were at times in the first half yesterday. That's for sure. Yeah, Ellie, who's watching on YouTube, says, uh, "Speaking of James Ward Prowse, when Lavia's back, I'd be tempted to put uh, Ainsley Maitland Niles and Lavia on together." JWP really struggling, played every game this season, possibly could do with a rest. So it'll be interesting to see, obviously, in terms of the midfield whether that happens. But Glenn uh, Jacob's been stealing my notes there because I uh, I'd had in there that it is the last uh, home game before the uh, World mm. Cup in the Premier League. Of course, they got Sheffield Wednesday at home in the the Cup next week. But important to try and end on a high in the Premier League, and despite the Crystal Palace game, try and build on that momentum from the second and half against Arsenal. Yeah, it, de- it definitely is important and I totally agree with what Jacob says. Uh, you know, we need to um we need to get something from this game and we need to go for it. You know, we, ju- we just don't want another horrible passive performance. You know, if we if we go for it and we get in their faces and they and they beat us fair and square then I don't think many people would have, a, you know, too much of an issue with that. Mm. Um but it's these games where we you know, we we don't do much, and we still lose anyway. You kind of think, well, you might as well, you might as well have, you know, you almost want in one of those games where we swarm all over teams for seventy minutes, and then we're just hanging on. I mean, you got five subs now, so why not? You yeah. know? Yeah. Um, I I just I just I just want to see us being positive. I I don't want to see us sitting back, and uh, you know, we're not playing prime Barcelona here. <laughs> You know, they're, they're good, but they're not that great. You know, we shouldn't be that far behind them. If we if we go in with it, go in positive, and we do have, you know, if Belakosh up and Lavia are back, that makes us a better team. Um, so, yeah, I'm 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 quite I'm quite hopeful that we can uh, we can do something in this game. And uh, I yeah, just to echo Jacob's point, I think for for Ralph's sake and everyone's morale going into the summer, we we certainly need to. Mm. But um, but anyway, I'm looking forward. I'm in the summer, what we're talking about the World Cup. I'm I'm it's looking forward. Somewhere, Glenn. To, I'm looking. Yeah, it is <laughs> Qatar. But I'm uh, I'm looking I'm looking forward to the last game against Liverpool because they're going to have so many players go into the World Cup. We really have to go into them. <laughs> really have to get stuck into <laughs> get them. The big time. Yeah, see how many of them fancy it. I'm yeah, deadly serious true. about that because there's not many of our players that are going. So. Yeah. So maybe well, we'll get a nice a nice little win at Liverpool just before we go away because they're rubbish at the moment, aren't they? That's one for you and you and Martin to chat about next week, I think. But uh, no, good stuff. Well, just on to predictions then. Uh, Alex, our producer, who admits to knowing very little about football, uh, was the only one to predict the uh, correct <laughs> score from the uh, Crystal Palace game. He predicted them to win 1-0, so he got three points. So uh, in typical TSP prediction league fashion, he's now joined top of the league with Glenn uh, with 12 points. Uh, Steve and myself are propping up the, uh, the table respectively. I can see... Uh, some uh, predictions coming through already. Uh, Ellie's saying 4 0. I'm assuming to Newcastle. Chris Walker, 4 0 Newcastle. Not looking forward to it. Uh, I can see my dad's watching in Florida, which is great. Don't think Ralph knows what his best team is. Going to be another very difficult afternoon. Uh, Martin's gone for 3 1 to Newcastle. I'm going to get it out there early. I've gone for 3 new, uh, three nil Newcastle. Sorry. So it's not a, an optimistic start. But, Jacob, what, what are you fancying? Do you know what? I think the reason why I'm so bad at this prediction thing is that I think I've gone for Saints to win every game apart from Man City. <laughs> but. So I'm going to continue that and go 2-1 Saints. 2-1 Saints, excellent. Very optimistic. Glenn, what about you? Um, oh, I don't know. I, 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 I will go for a draw. I will go for a one, one, one draw. One on draw. Can't All speak, right. sorry. Steve, <laughs> to finish the uh, set? Um, yeah, I think a draw as well. Um, I'll go for the thriller, 0-0. <laughs> <laughs> cool. 